volcanic eruptions can be one of the biggest and most serious natural hazards on our planet. As scientists, we know quite a lot about volcanoes on land, but very little about what happens when they erupt under the water or when the products they produce enter the ocean. This is remarkable given that two thirds of all volcanoes actually lie under the sea. We hardly ever see what happens under the ocean surface because of the remoteness and the vast water depths at which they lie. So when Hunga volcano erupted in 2022, offshore from the Kingdom of Tonga, this provided a unique opportunity to study such a major event. So what happened? Well, on January the 15th, 2022, Hunga volcano produced the most explosive volcanic eruption in more than 100 years. It created a tsunami that crossed the entire Pacific Ocean and erupted a plume that reached 57 kilometers high. Perhaps more remarkable was the huge impact the eruption had on the seafloor, where the only telecommunications cables that connected the Kingdom of Tonga to the rest of the world were cut right in the midst of a volcanic crisis. So what did we do? With a range of international collaborators, we were able to get a research ship out to identify changes to the seafloor just a few months after the eruption occurred. We showed how deep scours were carved into the seafloor. And seafloor samples, such as these held at Boscorf, help us to understand the nature of the powerful underwater flows that were created as the eruption collapsed into the sea. These flows reached speeds of up to 122 kilometers per hour and traveled over more than 100 kilometers, explaining the extensive damage to seafloor cables. Our research has allowed us to show, for the first time, what actually happens when an eruption column collapses rapidly into the ocean, creating the fastest underwater flows anyone has ever measured anywhere on Earth. Our research also reveals that Hunga Volcano is far from unique and provides the means to identify similar hazardous volcanoes that exist elsewhere. So we can better assess the risks to communications and to vulnerable coastal communities around the world.